Hey folks, Carl Kischel here, and welcome to this week's edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update, researching the cloud blog so you don't have to. So this week, we have a lot of great information to share, including some up updates on Azure Migrate, new naming for Windows Virtual Desktop, now called Azure Virtual Desktop, and some additional features, some Microsoft Teams roadmap updates, new Microsoft 365 Defender update, and so on. So with that, let's jump into this week's updates. All of this week's updates, the links to all the websites can be found in the description of this video. So our first update is regarding Azure Migrate and a new feature that's available now in public preview, which will support private endpoints. So right now, if you're familiar with Azure Migrate, um, and if you're not familiar with Azure Migrate, I should say, this is a tool set that helps you analyze, discover, and evaluate on-premises systems to validate if they can be moved to the cloud, gives you some step-by-step -step instructions on how to migrate on-prem systems into the cloud, what the cost could be, uh, and actually performing that migration. So the Azure migration tool actually does a lot. So uh, up until this point, the tool ran over the normal internet and internet connectivity connections so over the public internet. With this new public preview, you will now have the option to redirect the Azure Migrate network traffic over uh, an express route, which is a, like a direct connect or private peering connection between your network and data center and the Azure cloud and or a site-to-site -site VPN. So this will make things faster, better, stronger, greater, more compliant, more secure, et cetera. So this is in public preview. Check it out if you are interested in Azure Migrate. Azure Virtual Desktop. So what was formerly known as Windows Virtual Desktop is now called Azure Virtual Desktop or AVD, I guess, coming from WVD. So it's a, it's a naming convention, naming change for sure. But along with this, there are some new capabilities that are coming soon, mostly into public preview. So the first one is regarding support for Azure Active Directory, uh, quote unquote, domain join or uh, joining your machines in Azure into uh, Azure Active Directory, which of course will open the door for more security etc., but also more management. And specifically, you may have guessed, management with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So along with Azure Active Directory joining capabilities, this will light up some additional capabilities in Endpoint Manager to help you manage your Windows 10 multi-session enterprise uh, virtual desktops in Azure. There are some other new features and enhancements coming with this name change. Um, the third one here is regarding a quick start experience, which is uh, promising to help deploy Azure virtual desktops or your Windows virtual desktops into the Azure virtual desktop platform a lot quicker. Check out the blog post for more details. We have a few updates regarding Microsoft Teams from a roadmap perspective. The first one is some music on hold capabilities that are will be coming to Microsoft Teams. So instead of having silence, if you are transferring a call um, within Microsoft Teams, you now have the option of uh, playing music while that call is on hold or if it's being transferred. So we have the caller has an idea that the call is still active. So this is currently in development and is slated for release next month, July, 2021. Reporter style screen sharing and presentation mode coming to Microsoft Teams. Again, this is currently in development and is slated for release next month, July of 2021. And this feature will give you two new presenter modes uh, within Microsoft Teams. You know, so think of the, uh, the, the weatherman or weather person um, type of presentation where you have a PowerPoint behind you and your silhouette, your video feed in front of it. Um, so you'll have that and also a side-by-side -side presentation mode 
uh, coming to Microsoft Teams. So a great way to enhance your audio video collaboration calls in Teams. Some changes coming to Microsoft 365 Defender. If you are a current user of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, please know that your portal and management experience will automatically default to the new portal experience, which is hosted by Microsoft 365 Defender. So this change is coming on July 6th of this year, 2021, and you'll be defaulted back to the Microsoft 365 Defender screen for all your Defender um, admin needs. If you want to opt out of this, I uh, do want to highlight this link here, which will help you um, opt out of that automatic redirection in your portal settings. There's a new service coming to Microsoft 365 called Scheduler, and this will give you an opportunity to use natural language to schedule meetings, follow-ups, appointments, etc within your Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So it's really focused on setting up meetings within Outlook and uh, Exchange Online using the Cortana technology. So basically how this is going to work is uh, you can dictate, um, hey Cortana, please schedule a meeting sometime Monday morning with uh, John Smith, Fred Jones, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll automatically look at free busy and schedule that appointment for you. So there is additional cost for this. Um, in addition to the Microsoft 365 licensing that you may already be paying for, but this could be a really cool time saver uh, for your high profile accounts who want to have an extra bit of white glove service for their meeting schedulings. Getting started, with Microsoft Viva Learning and Microsoft Mechanics. So this was previously mentioned, this particular uh, video recording that the Microsoft Mechanics recorded last month. And uh, they do a really good deep dive within uh, what Microsoft Viva is all about, how to deploy it, how to use it within your organization, et cetera. If you're not familiar with Viva, it's all about personalized learning and creating a curated learning experience for your end users. So this is a good recap on the background of Viva, what it does, and a nice link to the Microsoft Mechanics recording. But I did want to call your attention here to the bottom and this opportunity to engage with the Viva product group via an AMA, a Ask Microsoft Anything event which is happening June 23rd of 2021. So click on the particular link here uh, to register for that event. It's a great opportunity to engage with the Viva product team, ask questions, learn more about deployment, roadmap, et cetera. So definitely check out the link for more info. Deep dive into logging into Windows 10. So. This doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the Microsoft Cloud just yet. I'll get to that in a little bit, but this was a really good primer on if you wanted to learn anything about how Windows 10 logon occurs and all the various components and services that make this happen. Um, it's a pretty good read for those of you who are well familiar with this. Um, probably not so much, you're probably familiar, but maybe if you haven't read about this in a while, um, I want to kind of go back to how all this works and learn about LSA and Kerberos, NTLM, NetLogon, et cetera. Um, it's a really good uh, blog post to give you all the basics and fundamentals. Uh, the one thing I will point out, though, is keep an eye on this blog post as uh, there will be subsequent follow-ups covering how Windows 10 interacts with Azure Active Directory for authentication. So definitely stay tuned there for more info on that hybrid scenario. Setting up a phishing simulation program, part one. So you may be aware that the Microsoft 365 platform allows you to create these phishing simulations. It's a way to test your end users to see uh, how they would interact or react to a phishing expedition, expedition or campaign. So you could set up these simulations for your particular organization 
and set up a lot of uh, parameters, um, et cetera, this particular blog post gets into some really good best practices on what you need to do to set this up and some good things to, to consider uh, in preparation for this. So this is part one of a multi-part series. This first part is all about getting ready, setting things up, and um, also uh, looking at part two, which will actually get into what the payload should look like and the actual phishing campaigns themselves. So really good blog post if you want to leverage the phishing simulation uh, features within your Microsoft 365 platform to test out your end users and to secure your environment. And last but not least, bringing Visio to Microsoft 365. So a lot of you are familiar with Visio. It's a flow charting and diagramming tool that's been available via Microsoft for quite some time. There are currently two plans for Visio, plan one and plan two. They are paid plans. Uh, interesting post here is um, the announcement that in July, Microsoft will be rolling out a lightweight version of the Visio web app for current Microsoft 365 users. So you'll have this opportunity to use a lightweight version of the Visio web app to do some uh, lightweight and uh, lower end uh, diagramming, flow charting, et cetera. Uh, as mentioned, this is for existing, existing licensees of the Microsoft 365 platform. What does that mean? Let's scroll down here and check it out. So it's all the usual suspects of the uh, existing Microsoft platform. So if you have Microsoft 365 A1 through A5, uh, Office 365 through A1 through A5, and also E1 through E5 on both platforms, you will have an opportunity to engage in this free lightweight Visio app. And that concludes this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Thank you so much for participating, attending, viewing the video. Really do appreciate it. If you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Um, as many thumbs up as you can, that'd be great. If you have any comments, drop a comment into the comment box. I read all comments and reply to everything. So I take your feedback really seriously and to heart um, and appreciate if you took the time out to do that. If you'd like to reach out to me, I can be found on LinkedIn at Carl Kischel. Same thing on Twitter. Uh, it could also be found on Twitter. And uh, click on the notification button too if you want to be kept up to date on when I release these uh, weekly video updates. So usually it's towards the latter part of the week. With that, wish you well. Thank you so much again for viewing and we will ca catch you next time. Take care.